Hello subscribers, hello others. David Hoffman, longtime filmmaker. And I'm about to show you a clip about a single day. The day is October 4th, 1957. I was alive, I was a kid, and I was about 13 years old, lived in Levittown, Long Island. And on that day, that night, my parents stepped outside of our house in Levittown, as did millions of others, looking in the sky for something new totally new. Have you ever had anything in your life happen that's totally new? That came in a moment and that moment before it wasn't there. Nothing like it was there. Of course, that's Sputnik. The Russians fired Sputnik up in the sky and there was a thing floating above us for the first time. You looked up and it wasn't an airplane. It was a man-made object that beeped we were shocked. Some people prayed. Some people felt this was the dawn of something new. Nobody at first was afraid. That's very important to remember. So I'm about to show you a clip from my feature documentary, Sputnik Mania, on Sputnik and how America reacted to it, which is part of the reason for the arms race, part of the reason for the evolving Cold War was what the Russians did when they fired up that little teeny thing, thing this big, with a couple of wires hanging off it, that beeped. It's quite a story, and this particular moment, I hope, gives you a sense of what was first shown to us on TV. You're seeing really live television, as you will see, and you'll see everybody trying to like look at it and figure it out and see it. We thought we saw it. Some people debate whether we did, but we thought we saw it. One guy in my town, his garage door opened, and he said, that the, but the Sputnik beep caused my garage door open. Every time it came over, which was every X amount of hours, my garage door opened. All kinds of stuff like that happened. I'm going to tell you at the end just a bit about what happened after this day. But this day was quite an amazing moment, and I don't think there's ever been a day like it since. It was October 4th, 1957. A Friday evening. For most Americans, life was, as they said at the time, normal. Just about everyone has been following the World Series, where the legendary New York Yankees were facing the upstart Milwaukee Braves. Also this evening, Millions of families were gathering to watch the premiere of a new TV show. What's the matter, Mandra? You look peculiar. Oh, I think a piece of my nose got stuck in my throat. <laughs> Normal. Seven thousand miles away, in deepest secrecy, engineers working for our arch enemy, Soviet Russia. We're putting the final preparations on a rocket that would carry a 23-inch aluminum sphere, polished so that it would shine like a star. Although no one knew it yet, what these scientists and engineers were about to do would change America and the world forever. The mighty roller, our rocket vibrates. White hot flame gushes down. And the great beast lives slowly from the earth. We are about to create a new planet that we will call Sputnik. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. This first satellite was today successfully launched in the USSR. We are bringing to you the most important story of this century. Mankind's breakthrough into space. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. This first satellite was today... It emanates radio signals every three-tenths of a second, charting its course as it streaks across the sky. Radio signals can be picked up on 20 and 40 megacycles as it circles the Earth once every... We announce to our that anyone with a shortwave radio can listen to Sputnik. 
This is Harry Thank on a recording. This is the satellite, October 1957. Coming in on uh, 20 megacycles. Steve Chef left town Long Island reporting to the world that I am hearing it. He needs alter. Dying now. Out of my range. Another hand has got to pick this up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing to you the most important story of this century. Mankind's breakthrough into space. For the first time, mankind has reached for the stars and found them within his grasp. The Westinghouse Broadcasting Company filmed the first motion pictures of the Russian satellite. You are about to witness this historic event. Now here is a photograph released by the Soviets of the satellite, and this is a track of what you will see in the lower half of your television screen. So be sure that you watch very, very carefully. Uh, there it is, I see it. about in the center of the screen in the lower third, you got we, the we moved the camera. the camera. The camera was moved now there. Now we start over again. Now we start over again, and the stars are in the background. This is a photograph of a monitor screen. There is the object. Across the bottom. Oh, that, across the bottom. Remarkable. About yeah, uh, in the middle standing. of the screen now, I would say. Yeah, that is yeah. wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Right now, it's north of Auckland, New Zealand, and moving southeast. It will be, in 10 minutes, about 1,500 miles north of Little America. And in about 24 minutes, it will be uh, over Santiago, Chile. And in about 50 minutes from now, it will be over Spain. And now back tonight in trying for $20,000 are Eddie Hodges, the 10-year-old schoolboy, and his partner, Major John Glenn, Jr., the Marine Corps jet pilot. Uh, what do you think of the Russian satellite, which is circling the Earth at 18,000 miles <laughs> per hour? Well, to say the least, George, they're out of this world. But <laughs> uh, This is uh, really quite an advancement for not only the Russians, but for international science. I think we'd all agree on that. It's the first time anybody has ever been able to get anything out that far in space and keep it there for any length of time. And this is probably the first step toward space travel or moon travel, something we'll probably run into maybe in Eddie's lifetime here at least. <laughs> Eddie, would you like to take a trip to the moon? No, sir, I like it fine right here. <laughs> Sputnik was the first man-made thing that ever floated above our heads in outer space. It didn't do anything but send out innocent radio beeps. But Sputnik was earth-shattering. Not only because it was the first man-made thing in space, but because of the rocket that got it there and what that rocket meant. The Soviets said the kind of rockets which had taken Sputnik up could also carry nuclear weapons in space. They were using Sputnik to, to try to scare the United States, to scare Americans into the idea that we were all in danger of some Soviet nuclear weapon coming from space. The United States is in a state of confusion and surprise. Sputnik was the 9-11 of our day. People were shocked that Russia had a technology that could do this, and we didn't. America said, now wait a minute. Russians can't even build a refrigerator. What are they doing putting a Sputnik, a satellite, into orbit? We were convinced as Americans that we were the dominant power in the world. We had to be. So the idea that our arch enemy, the evil Soviet empire, could beat us by getting into space first was just devastating. I mean, people were walking around saying, how can this happen? You know, U.S. is number one. What, what, what is this? This is the Soviet Union's first man-made Earth satellite on display at the USSR Industrial Exhibition in Moscow. Ever since the news of Sputnik flashed around the world, America has been asking questions. What went wrong? How did a nation of backward peasants forge so dramatically ahead of us in the race to space? I guess the American people alarmed that a foreign country, especially an enemy country, can do this. If we fear this. We feel that they have something out that majority of the people don't know about. Senator Jackson of Washington describes the Russian achievement 
as a devastating blow to the prestige of the United States. The people of the United States have been humiliated, they're disturbed, and they're unhappy. The enemy of ours has outdistanced us. Russia's getting into space really bothers me. We are headed downhill to the status of a second-rate world power. Night after night, politicians and other leaders were telling Americans that Sputnik revealed that we were at great risk. Not just our pride, but our security is at stake. We surely don't want to become hysterical, but let's become factual. Let's start telling the truth. And let's face the fact that we've taken a licking, psychologically at least, and scientifically. And it has embarrassed us throughout the world. If Russia wins dominance of this completely new area, well, I think the consequences are fairly plain. Probable Soviet world domination. Okay, so for that weekend, it was a beautiful thing. We were very emotionally affected by it. It happened on Monday that things changed. They changed because the news reported, largely led by the Democrats, who disagreed with Eisenhower, the president at the time, and wanted to kind of stick it to him, that this was not a great thing, this was a dangerous thing, because the rocket that launched it was an ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, that could hit us and could kill us. And this was horrible. And Sputnik changed from beautiful, spiritual, mankind evolving into the universe to and we were told it over and over and over again. It was very, very scary. So that's what happened with Sputnik. If you like the story and you want to hear more stories from me, please support me and here's how. All you got to do, I know this is tough, is let the advertisement run. You don't have to watch it. I don't watch them. But if you let it run, a nickel or a penny clicks off to me and I don't have to ask for money. <laughs> I would sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you soon. David Hoffman, Filmmaker.